the astral journey process and my experiences. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. So I said I would jump on and do a quick video on like the whole astro process, um, astro journey process that I learned. And this was basically just through my meditation. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was I was given the guidance and it and it really wasn't where my attention was going as far as meditating, but it helps me to learn a lot and to understand some things and Within it, there was teachings, and it, it was a really cool experience, and it helped me to evolve because it went from my meditation to um, astral traveling, um, and then also it kind of evolved from there, you know, working on the chakras and the energy and then the kundalini, and so this was kind of part of the the process, getting to where I am now on um, the evolution of the journey. And I want to kind of just mention that because this I got the other day when I was sitting here, it kind of just fell in. And so what I got on that was like, you have the the journey of the evolution of who we are, right? Um, on different levels and why we come in here, right? Into that's to expand, to learn and to experience and to awaken. So I'm just going to put this out here, what I just got, and it's, it's very short, and I'll get back into the video, but it was, it says the human evolution journey, right? You go from pure, which you come in from source, right? You're being born into the, which is pre-birth, um, the form, so you become into the form, and then you become into the ego, right? And the identity, and then you think you are this human form, this concept, because you let everything else go and you forget. Jews generally about around the age of like five and there's a story with that too um and so the story behind that was um you know this um these two kids were talking and they were in their room thinking they were by themselves and one of the older kids came to the younger kid and said you know can you remind me because i feel like i'm forgetting and, and so that was you know and it was just little symbolic things like that we lose our awareness of who we are as we become this human form because the body is um like full of memory and records and we start joining with the body not at birth not when you're conceived it's an evolution into the body of form so you're liter literally actually not in the body fully until you're in your later ages, right? And so that's about five, I'd say about five or six, you know, where you're really starting to forget who you are, your connection. And that's because the body is so full of stuff, memory, DNA, um, things that have been passed down from your family and your conditioning, your beliefs and everything that you're taking on. So you become this form of the person the ego and the identity to it, your attachment, because now I'm, I'm Laura, I am not source or spirit or my soul, right? I become in now to the human form. And so from there, we come self-focused. Um, okay, me, 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 right? <laughs> self-focused, right? And we, we kind of live in this little box of, okay, I, I want this and I want that and I want that and I want this and I want this and I want a family, this and car, you know? And we do all that and then we get to that and then we're done at the end of the process where we feel like we've fully completed our journey. Like what else is left? I've done everything I wanted to do. When we get to that point, we start then coming back into oneness, right? Because there's nothing else we start seeking, right? We start seeking more. And whether that is, you know, whether we have, um, this contemplation, because like in my own personal journey, um, you know, it, it was like, there, there's got to be more than than this, because this is not what it is. And every time everything I got there to that point, the house, you know, the car, the family, 
it was empty. It was just like this facade. It's, it wasn't real, right? It was just a facade. Even though it was real, it wasn't real. It didn't, it was the, the frame of mind that made up what it was that it meant to me, right? And so it kind of was empty when I, when I got there. So I didn't see any, 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 you know, truth in it, or I, it's kind of hard to explain it when, it, and I struggled with that. And that was part of my awakening. So then I got into, went into my awakening, the death experience. Right. And then we go into this healing process. And then this is like an evolution of, of what we do. Um, and then you go into oneness and then like where I'm at now is like, okay, I, I'm more focused on oneness than I am on just my individual journey as a a Laura person my identity you know I'm kind of that's gone um and so more I would and then we come into purity which and then we go back into source right so it's kind of like this journey that evolves through our consciousness as we're going and we're really not any of that um you know and a lot of people we because we get attached to the body and our our identity and our name we believe it is who we are but it really isn't you know but anyway that i just wanted to kind of put that out there as part of you know the video and um, because i had touched on that but it's the stages that you go through as in your evolution right and so as i was going through the stages um this was a part of my journey right is this astro travel and having these experiences and it was really interesting how it went because I really didn't know what I was doing I didn't have any spiritual teacher I didn't have any anyone helping me I was just kind of going along and feeling the guidance because since my my awakening the death experience and then the angel I was kind of just following the steps that was put forth before me so like the meditation um, and then the yoga and then moving to Florida and then from there, it just kept evolving. I just kept following the guidance, you know, because I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just going and it was like being the steps because when you step on the path, everything falls in line for you. And so it kind of just followed it, right? But as I was getting into meditation more and more every day and I had pushed, I did a video on that. I pushed through what I call the window, like, because you can't see it, right? You can't, you can't see when you, you just, it's a feeling that you feel when you're pushing through this, where you get to a point where you feel like you can't meditate anymore in, in that moment. And if you just do it just a little bit more, you're just going to push through that. It's like a window, like, because there's nothing, it just feels like this, uh, I, I don't want to say a little a pressure, but it just feels like you're yeah, like a ceiling, right? You come to the ceiling of not not being able to go any further but if you push through you can it's like going through this um, invisible space right and then I had mentioned it went from like 10 minutes of meditation every day and I ended up going through this window and so I had expanded my consciousness from that um, through this window and I ended up meditating for like an hour and 15 minutes about and then coming back into the present moment, not knowing where I went or what I was doing or what was happening, you know, I looked at the clock and I was like, wow, it only felt like 15 minutes, right? But it was literally an hour and a half, like 15 minutes that I was away, hour and a half, something like that. But from there, I sat down and I kept meditating every day, right? And so it was just so much easier and more easier. When you push through these windows, it's almost like, if you're in training for running, you know, you just keep pushing, keep pushing through, right? And that's basically the same thing, but with meditation, right? And so after that happened, I started feeling things, right? And so I was like, I don't know if I'm down with that. I don't want to be touched. I don't want to feel anything. I don't, you know, and it kind of felt like things were happening or somebody was touching me very lightly or, but it was tingling and things. And I was starting to feel energy and feeling the separation from my body, I really wasn't per se somebody touching me. Um, but I didn't know that because I couldn't see anything at that point, right? My third eye wasn't open. I could just have that feeling. And I believe extra Esther Hicks talks about that. You know, you feel start feeling this lifting away from the body and it just settling. And then you're just kind of um, and in that space, right? You're more 
connect and a lot of the yogis talk about that as well um and then from there i would just start getting guidance right and so one meditation after that i had found this really cool um uh, amethyst right in the one store and i was like oh, this is this, this is the one and i'll sit there and i'll use it to meditate and i was like okay i'll just do that and so when i was holding that in my hand meditating i could actually start feeling the energy of it right and so i was learning without really had intention to understand you know i was because i was being guided i was like okay i'm gonna I feel, i'm feeling energy like i'm trying to figure this out right with having just self and I want to say it's not really self teaching because I was following guidance, but it was self taught, right? <laughs> At the same time, right? And then so, and next after that, I found like this um this song, right? And it was like a Hemi Sync CD. It was the Shaman's Car. I don't know if you guys heard of that, but uh, that was the next thing I started playing that during my meditations and playing around with that. Like it, it really kind of helped me get into doing these um like meditating as far as you have well you have to quiet the mind meditation then you have these meditations where you go on journeys and so I started going more down on the path of going on journeys because when I started playing that and sitting there in meditation and focusing on my third eye and I had my tongue up underneath here underneath my tongue my teeth right and sitting um Indian style, you know, how you meditate and just sitting there with this crystal in my hand just and just meditating like and listening to the music play and then the beats, right? It started taking me on these visual journeys. So I started going on journeys, right? And I really wasn't intending for that, but it was really cool. So I started just following along with that. Um, next thing I know, um, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get some sage, I'm gonna get some crystals, <laughs> you know, and so creating my meditation space is what I what I started doing and and just kind of whatever was feeling like guided to to using and do, I, I started doing it, right? And so um I had everything set up. And so what I started doing was before sitting down to meditate. I was like, okay, I got to start cleansing this space, right? So I started at the top of the, because I, what I did was I had my pillow here up against the wall and I would lean up against the um, the couch, right? With the med meditation cushion. And then I would have this yoga mat underneath me and it was like kind of like a runner uh, to the meditation cushion. And so I would step at the top of my meditation uh, mats and I would go yeah this way like right and around the whole mat and I would just sage the whole thing and I would just kind of say like a cleansing uh, mantra I don't remember exactly what it was um, but anything will do you can make up your own and it was like cleansing from this way all the way around went around three times and then I went around the back opposite way and I was like opening up the energy right, for more um, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and then also asking my guides, uh, angels, masters, and teachers to join me in the meditation, and so, and I would do the hearts, right, and then like that, and then I would sit down and just start meditating, right, so I had all the crystals laid out around me um, along the, the walkway, and then kind of setting it up where like the angels, masters and teachers could sit in circle with me, kind of like shamans do, right? And it was really interesting that I was doing this with the kind of music that I was having. And I would invite them to sit with me in meditation and help me bring in, bring in the awareness and understanding that I need about my journey and who I was and things like that. And so as I was happening, you know, I was getting information downloads, you know, that's where kind of a lot of it had started. And so that was like the, the opening into the meditation. Now, when I sat down for meditating, um, I would imagine, and I don't know, I didn't know a lot about this either. And so I started doing it, it was like, I, I had gotten to imagine my chakras spinning. And so it was um, spinning this way right from the bottom up and then out and then I did that three times I was told to do that three times imagine them spinning 
all the way up and out three times. So I did that. And then I would focus on my breath. I would just sit there and focus on my breath in and out, come in, in and out. So it's almost like watching the breath come in and watching the breath come out as you're going, breathing, right? And then at the same time, you're focusing on your third eye, watching, observing the breath come in and out and then becoming one with it. And the next thing I know, I was, I was out. <laughs> um, and this was just kind of like a learning process that I was going, I didn't take any classes on it. I was just kind of following what I felt like what, what I would be given, what I was given on how to do this. Right. And so as I was doing that, it just became everyday practice, you know, and that's the process. So if you want to try that, um, you know, and then put down below, <laughs> you know, what your experience is, if you, if you had it, but it's a, it's a practice every day, you know, it wasn't something that was overnight to get there with something I was doing, you know, every day. Um, now, some of the experiences that I had were, were really cool. So um, one of them was actually a shaman um, experience. So once I was out, I ended up coming into, it was really like, it was nighttime. It was like in, in the woods or in the forest somewhere. And there was this fire and I had, when I came in, I was sitting um at this fire and I was looking at the fire right it was like a campfire and I started realizing the the energy around me and I was like where am I right because <laughs> I just kind of popped in there and this person next to me I knew who they were but I didn't know I don't know who they were but in that um in that space I knew who they were and and I had seen people feet dancing around you know the the fire and I was like oh this is like Native American stuff or something right and so next thing I know is this guy starts coming over to me and he was all in this whole headdress and all this thing and he's all dancing and he's got this you can hear all the bells and everything uh, as he's dancing um and he takes this knife out <laughs> like oh, he's gonna kill me right no what he does is he and the person next to me that I knew that was there with me to, to, to help me through this, they're like, it's okay. They're just going to initiate you. So what he did is he cut my head, right, with the knife. And it didn't bleed, right? It was just energetically, ther therically. It, it was a cut with a knife, right? And symbolically as an initiation and for my third eye awakening, right? And so... That was like going into my healing journey and things like that. Now, that was interesting. That was that was actually one of my first ones because later on I had found out that I had past lives uh, as a medicine man, um, and 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 that's kind of is you know a different story because it's a past life that I did and as a regression, I was literally um being sent out to be a hunter as a child, right? They send your, the, the young ones out to go hunt, you know, or to do whatever. It's like a test that they do. They, they send out their, their young, um, okay. And see how you do right with whatever food or whatever you have, and you don't come back until you've caught something. Well, I ended up being, of course, male. Um, and I had, been tracking a bear because I was going to track a bear but I was at this big waterway this big stream that was coming down and it wasn't like a very deep one it was very shallow and skim and I happened to look down into the water and I seen myself in the water and when I was I was just kind of drinking water and, and splashing water on my face because I've been out in the woods hunting and tracking this bear for a long time and still hadn't caught him and next thing I know, when I look up, I look right into the face of this bear and our eyes are meeting, right? In this past life experience. And I seen the spirit within the bear and I knew I couldn't kill the bear. So it was either he was going to kill me, <laughs> right? Or we were going to go our, our own ways. And so at that point, I had, we had gone our own ways, like, we, we didn't attack each other, thank God, and the bear had left because I maybe they seen they seen the spirit in me in that that lifetime. But 
whatever happens, um, it was like this exchange. Um, and then I had gone back to the village and, you know, with the people. And I had told them I wasn't, I, I didn't want to be a hunter. I wanted to be a medicine man. And that was a turning point in my life, right? And so from there, I've done things, you know, as far as helping people and being, um, you know, in, in helping with healing and things like that. And so that's kind of been a, a past life that's led into this life. And I've had a lot of experience like in this life with Native Americans when I was a kid, right? I always wanted to be the Indian. I always wanted to be, we played Indian cowboys and Indians. And I would have um, just a lot of things related to Native American uh, as a kid. Even I had a friend in school who was Native American. <laughs> her name was Buffy. I don't know what happened to her, but um, yeah. So anyway, um, that was one of the past lives. And so that was really cool. Um, then after the shaman one, there was another experience where I had literally, this was a different um, evening, one of my outer body experiences where I had end up into, it was kind of like when they had those cobblestone roads. And I went back to that point in time where this this guy was like this house I popped into and I was like, I don't know where I'm and I'm starting to look around. And then all of a sudden this boy comes in and grabs me because they seen me, but I didn't see, you know, nobody else could see me apparently, or maybe they would, I don't know. But he was like grabbing me to try to hide me because this person came in and he didn't want them to see me and so they we snuck out the back door and this guy comes and he sits down he's sitting at one of those desks and he's got this feather pen and he's writing in this book or this ledger or whatever it is and so this kid takes me out the back and he takes me up in through this path into like this place and he's pulling these big um uh, what do you call them like these big branches off like he's like there's this hut or this building kind of varnish looking and it's all covered up with these huge trees and these limbs and stuff and he uncovers it and he takes me in there next thing you know he's pulling these things down and it's like it's lowering this um uh I guess it's like a like a platform right it's slowing a pat platform and next thing I know we're looking up at the sky Right. And it's like wide open. And then there's this huge um, thing over in the corner where you can actually look up at the stars in the sky. So I'm assuming it was kind of like an astrologer or something like that. So um, and then that was the end of that. I don't remember any other bits of that wherever whatever happened at that point, you know, happened. Um, but that was a really cool experience. Um, and he was just worried about us getting in trouble, you know, if we were found there, which I don't know uh, if it's a lucid dreaming. I, you know, is it real? Is it not real? <laughs> you know, um, and then this next one was really cool. This was on another evening. And so basically I had popped into this place where it was like, it was almost like a cave. And in this cave place, I was feeling the walls and it was like these rooms of different caves all in this area. And it was dark, right? But you could, it was actually like, you could feel it. It was like real, right? And I was touching the walls and I was like, oh, that's weird. So <laughs> trying to, you know, make sense of everything and what was going on. So, uh, and as we were walking into these different rooms, I was asking this person, it was like, there was a person with me every time I went, right? That was being guided. And I was never really alone. And I went and I was like, what are all these rooms? And they were like, well, these are all the different places that you can go. Now, it wasn't like in the room, like if you were to walk into a room in a house, your room is set up the way it is. These were just cave walls and the rooms where you can go were in the, bo uh, the bottom of the room. So like it was uh, like on the bottom of the flooring of each cave room, right? Everything was a cave right around you, the walls and the ceiling. But when you started to walk in there, you would see this opening and it was like, everyone had a different um, place that you can go. One place was like a city. One place was like, uh, a, like a different place. And each one had something different. I was like, what is, what is this? And where is this? Right. Next thing I know, I'm walking back out of there. I'm like, I gotta go. I can't be here. I don't know where this is. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 
so I started like kind of panicking and um at that point I started walking back and I without this other person right I didn't feel like they were there and I came across this person that was sitting I guess I walked into one of those those caves or whatever or in the pathways and so I walked into this one where there was just this water that was running right down the middle of it. And this person was just sitting there, very sad looking. Um, and I sat next to them. We just had a, you know, a talk and I don't know what we were talking about, but I was observing myself talking. That's the, the thing was I was talking to this person, but then I was observing myself talking to this person along this waterway. And I didn't know who this person was, but I kind of knew who this person was, which was really weird. And next thing I know, I, I was like, okay, well, I got to go because time's running out and I need to get back. Right. And so for me, the only thing I can, I guess the getting back to was back to me in this physical form before I'm not able to, right. Because it seemed like a very repetitive thing where like, there was like this time where this, there was this window that would open where I would have to be back by Otherwise, it would close and I wouldn't be able to get through. Now, whether that is true or not, I don't know. Um, again, because I was just learning about that. And I still really haven't really dived into that or talked to anybody if they're aware of the same thing. Um, but if you know anything about that, drop that below. So if you have any insight into that. Um, but then, you know, I kept doing this every, every night and I had a different experience every night. And so it just, and then at, at some point it started bleeding into the nighttime and um, when I was sleeping. And then even when I was waking the next day, because like this one experience, and I literally realized that this was actually a past life um, that I experienced. And this one in this lifetime, like, I don't like spiders. I never liked spiders since I was little. Right. And I killed this one daddy long leg when I was oaks. I thought it was coming to attack me. And I didn't know why I felt like it was coming to attack me. But now I know because in this dream, which was a past life, I was actually a bug that was in a spider's net and I was being eaten at one point. So that is a past life that I've had. <laughs> right. And so in the lucid dream that I had, because I was starting to have lucid dreams now, not just astral um, travel when I was meditating, but a lucid dreaming, um, the lucid dreams had that started. I was literally laying there in bed and it was like, I was back in that moment having the lucid dream of this spider coming. And I can literally feel like the nets just like bouncing as the spider was coming. And I was all like, round wound it up in in the web you know how they do the spinning and they their prey I, I couldn't move and I couldn't and I was just and there was another bug or whatever uh, in consciousness it was a consciousness because I wasn't human I was in this body of a bug which was a consciousness right so I was that consciousness at that time in that experience, which was became a lucid experience, you know, after I've learned this. So I've had this mixture between astral travel, lucid dreaming and past lives all mixed in one that has come and it, it is affecting my life, right? And so they do affect your life in the present moment if you're not aware of it, right? And so this is how I, un I learned to understand this, like these things are affecting my current life, right? And to make amends with it and to heal it, right? And to forgive and to let it go. So, but it was really interesting to be back in that spider web to feel that. Um, and I guess it was for me to remember, you know, to work on that. Um, now, have I gotten over the fear of spiders? <laughs> uh, and I'm working on that. <laughs> Uh, some of them I'm okay with, some of them not. And it's just, yeah, that's, yeah, spider, I got to work on that one. But anyway, that was really an interesting experience to like feel yourself again, like as the spider is walking and you just know, it's like this sensing, you know, the spider's coming for you. <laughs> and this other bug over there was, we were actually having this communication and it was really interesting to have this experience on this level. Like it was really I don't know. It, it's just not something 
you, you got to experience it to understand it, you know, and it may sound weird and crazy, but it was really interesting to see and have these experiences to know that they've bled into this lifetime, right? With my fear of spiders. Um, and then the next thing, <laughs> uh, one night I had this lucid dreaming, like this is when my, my third eye really started to awaken. And I was literally woken up in the middle of the night by this huge psychic delic eye. It was, it was see-through that it was energy and through the, the, the shape of it was like huge. I'm going to say it's like, it was, it's like this big. Right. Um, and you could just see all the colors just shimmering through it, like out the outlines, because it was see-through. It wasn't, it wasn't solid, right? It was energetic. And it was, I, I felt this whoosh of like air go by me, right? And I was like, what is that? I don't have like a fan on or anything. And it, it was enough to wake me up out of a sleep. And so I woke up and I turned over because I felt something staring at me. And I was like, who's here? I didn't have anybody with me. And I opened my eyes and there was this big psychic delic eye looking right at me and it started blinking, right? It just blinked like an eye. And it just kept looking at me. And I was like, what is going on? I was like, this is crazy. Like I gotta, I must be sleeping. I must be having one of those dreams. And so I went back to, to sleep. I turned over and I was like, I'm just going back to bed. And at this point, I'm starting to just get used to all these things happening. Um and I'm just kind of not really, I'm just observing them, just, but not really, you know, not making a big deal out of them, but it was an interesting one. And then the next one, um, where I started having, seeing spirits, um, you know, and so this one where uh, I was sleeping and they started standing over me while I was sleeping and I'm um, sitting there hearing them talk. And there's like three women and it's like, I don't know if I know them, but it's like, there's women there and, but I can't see them, but I can hear them. And they're sitting like, Oh, look, she's doing really good. She's, you know, she's on her way. She's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you guys, I can hear you. <laughs> I know you're there and you're talking about me. Um, but that was really funny. I was like, can you let me get my sleep? Cause it was at the point I was like constantly running, running and doing in my sleep in my waking sleep. And during the day, um, I started having visions of um, like wolves and all kinds of things. And I don't know, it was just like really um, interesting, like these journeys that I was having. Um, and then one morning, <laughs> um, I had woke up and my whole bedroom was a forest. Like my my walls, <clears throat> it wasn't even like a... <clears throat> Like I was in a in a room anymore. My walls were just a forest, right? Because now that my third eye was open, and I'm having all these more intense experiences, I woke up from lucid dreaming coming in. I literally was looking at this forest in my room, right? And so I this person started getting up from the ground, right? And they got up from the ground. This was actually a male. Right. And he was in Native American clothing. And he just, it was like he was coming from that side of the realm into this realm and, and got into my body. Right. So, like, there's that Native American again. And so, as that Native American was there, this was really interesting. This Native American, you know, kind of was like on the ground in this forest and got up and then just got came in through whatever that was into the physical and got into my body. Um, now, remember, we're a record of everything, right? So all the past lives information is here. It's not that somebody was entering me. It was like, that was me, who I was in that life lifetime, right? And though there was two wolves that was standing next to him and those came with me, right? And so over the next few months, people, when I went to like the metaphysical stores or we we're having, and they were like, there's two wolves next to you. Or they would ask me, who are those wolves? Or who, what are those dogs, you know? But those were part of my past lives, right? And so we have all everything here within us uh, that what, everything that we experience, everything that our parents have had, um, what's been passed down, you know, so we have it all here, right? It's all ingrained. Um, 
on all levels, right? <clears throat> Our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual levels. And so that's how we get to create and, and change, you know, who we are, right? If we are not liking something about ourselves, we can change it, right? Because it's not that we are it, it's the body that we've taken up that we're having the experience through. It's kind of like going in into this changing room, put trying on some clothes, and it's like becoming this person, this persona of this person, because they have these clothes on. I'm now this person, I'm this fancy person. You know, if you put on some ritzy duds, you know, and oh, you, you're playing the role in the play, and then you take them off, and then you go on your way, right? <laughs> So it's kind of what this is like, this is your, this is your suit, right? And everything that comes with it, um, all the intelligence, all the memory, all the experiences. <clears throat> so these were just starting to come up, right? And, and I know from having gone on, you know, the path with the Buddhists and things like that, where you turn the third eye upon yourself and you're able to see all these things, right? And you are um healing all these things you're transforming all these things about yourself which i went on the journey of doing when i went into counseling and i'll share that in another video but i was using that technique um what when i was counseling people and you may may have heard of the process on, on that but i'm not going to get into that but anyway so i i get up and i'm like I can't believe my room is a forest. Like, what is going on here? So I'm I'm now bringing my lucid dreaming into my my day. So I get up, I go to the bathroom, come back in, and I didn't look in the mirror. I probably should have. I mean, probably could have seen anything, you know, there. But I was kind of still half asleep, and so I went back into my bedroom. And this is in the Laura form. And this isn't part isn't in the lucid dreaming. But I'm in the Laura form and I go back into my bedroom and it's still a forest. So I go, I'm going to go out and make my breakfast and get my tea or whatever. Maybe I'm just not back yet or whatever it is. And so I go back in and then finally it starts to dissipate, right? So the lucid dreaming is now coming into my daytime lifetime. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, this is a little, uh, a lot, <laughs> you know, so um. And then just, you know, just be aware of that because that can bleed into, you know, your your waking state um, as well. Because it started with mine. Um, and then I had this, uh, this one guy who came in and he was kind of like a traveler. He looked like he had gotten off uh, of a stage, uh, one of the, um, uh, what do you call them? One of the, the trains, like a long, long time ago. He had this really old style hat and he was dressed in a suit with this little screw. Um, briefcase he looked like he was I don't know probably like from 1600s or something like that I don't know I'm not really great with that um but anyway he had come in and he he went through I, it was like my uh, my place was becoming like Grand Central Station you know it was like it was really interesting it was like having um past life experiences astro travel I was having lucid dreamings I was having spirits come through like they were just stopping by and going past and whatever. Um, it was just really interesting. Um, <clears throat> and so pretty much that's what it was. Um, so and then again, you know, like I don't I don't know, like if you guys have any insight into like um in your experience, if you've done this kind of work, have you experience that you have to be back within the body at a certain time or is that not a factor right because it just seemed like every time I was going somewhere or coming back it was like I had to make sure that I was it just seemed like there was this consciousness about I have to be back at a certain time and whether that's because I was waking up I don't, I don't know or if it was like this portal time like you there's certain portal times that you have that you can go through and you have to be mindful about that so you can get back through. I, I don't know, but that seemed to be a, like a like a common thing that was happening. And I don't I should probably research more about that. But if you know anything about it, just drop it below. Um, so <clears throat> and then also during one of my meditations, um, 
I had to was told to actually uh, go outside, right? It was like, I don't know, it was like probably like 12, one in the morning after I got done with one of my out of body experiences. And so I, I went outside. I didn't know what I was looking at. Just, I was like, just told to go outside. So I went outside and then I did and I looked up, right? It was like, I heard look up and then there was all these um, like shooting stars. And then also there was like this meteor shower going on. And then there, there was the moon, right? And then there was like this cloud and I was, and I felt like I had to call, you know, take a picture. And so when I took a picture and I was on my way back in, it was like this male figure that had this white beard. It would look like he was a yogi, right? And I was like, or this ancient yogic person. I was like, who is that, right? It was like literally showing up in my camera and I, and I saved the picture and now I can't find it because I was going to show it. Um, with that being said, next thing I know, uh, Sadhguru shows up in my life. And it was probably like a week after um, after that happening. So I was like, well, that might be who it is because it looks kind of like him. It may have been, may have not been. But anyway, it seems like whenever I get the guidance, you know, something comes on the path. There's always something as you're moving forward, it, you know, uh, from there that leads you into the next thing. And that's kind of where I started at the point you know, finding all these spiritual teachers and then the meditation center. And then um, it just kind of evolved from there, which is different stories. I'm not going to get into that here. Um, but basically, that's that's how uh, I learned how to uh, do the astral travel. And those are some of my experiences from it. Um, and basically, again, if you have any you know, insight on that, uh, just drop that below. And if you, I do coaching sessions, um, not really on how to do astro travel, but life coaching, spiritual coaching, I do readings. Um, also a process that's called soul, um, soul regression. And so that's a kind of mixture of um, HQT and also introspective hypnosis and forgiveness therapy. So we do that as well. But um if you're interested in doing a session, uh, you know, reach out to me. There's an email below. Also, I do um, have some books out there on Amazon. You can purchase those as well. Um, writing on the main part of the, the book, I have the pre-books out there. When I first started my automatic writing and channelings, I would write them down and I compile them and put them in a book. Um, and then, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions or anything, drop them below and happy journeys.